hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Hello you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you already know that, don't you? That's why you've tuned in. I'm joined by Mickey from Essex today. How are you doing, Mickey? Yeah, fine, thank you. Good. Uh, what have you been up to this last week? I do the same week in, week out, you know. Um, training, getting up, going to work. Usual. There's been a bit of controversy, Mickey, the last five or six days, I've noticed. Uh, somebody's been down at your place and you were spraying some alloy wheel cleaner on a car, on some car wheels. What's all that about? Yeah, I mean, since the pandemic, we, we have been banged out down at work. Listen, I've been in the car wash. We've had, we've, I've owned car washes for the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, and I turned up. I think it was, I think he turned up for... I can't remember, it was a Monday. I mean, it was, it was packed out. I couldn't believe it. So I thought, you know what? I pulled up. I wasn't meant to be working. I don't normally work with the boys, but listen, it's my business. It's spreading back right the day. I'm yeah. proud of what I do. Um, even cleaning cars. Years ago, when I took over a, 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 an open car wash, I had a nightclub. I was doing nightclubs. A pal of mine walks in and goes, well, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what I'm doing? And I was levering the cars off. As I get washed, I get levered and bottom to get finished at the end. So he said, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean I'm doing? What do you think I'm doing? I said, levering cars off. Why are you doing it? You know, looking at me like I'm an idiot. So listen, mate, I'm proud of this. This is my business, mate. I've just got it up and going. It's got to be right. I want to be on the ball, make sure everything's done right, you know? Mm. So I don't know what people think. Because someone washes the car, you, 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 you're downgraded, you know? Listen, it allows me to drive fucking lovely cars, doesn't it? I can't sell cars as well. We refill wheels. We do a lot of things, you know? Mm. I'll get my hands stuck into wherever I can. I don't care what it is. Even if it's sweeping up around, around my areas, my vicinity, you know? That's yeah. what we do. I mean, We're grafters. Kevin, yeah. We don't go out mugging old women and fucking robberies and all that bollocks, you know what I mean? Them fucking plastic gangsters out there. We do, do we do things right? We make money. We make a living, you know? We I mean, work. Kev, yeah, they if there's a big order on, and uh, you know, it's uh, Sweps, Coca-Cola, or Ikea, or Marks and Sparks, uh, B and Q. Kev here will just get stuck in with all lads. Do you know what I mean? So there's, uh, listen, there's more millionaires out there today that are still grafting, digging, doing what they got to do, mate, to make a pound note. You know what I mean? They're behind the scenes. They don't see that, yeah? They only see one side of their life. The other side is what they do to get there, you know? If I were to go up so, to Dennis's place now in Sheffield and he was there, he might be getting some copper out of shredder with lads in the yard or something like that. And just yeah. walking in, sometimes you just got to do it yeah. to just show. Yeah, funny enough, someone approached me yesterday. They didn't get get a lot of copper for the right money, and can you move it on? You know, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm searching around for people to buy it and make a drink on it. You know, you know, granules of copper, ninety nine percent copper. You know, and he's a travelling man. He's a travelling man. He's a travelling man. A good man. Who's a and good a man? Sorry. Who's a good man? A friend of mine I met yesterday, he wanted to meet oh. me. He, he, they were actually showmen. They were in the circus game years ago. But he's still, he's still a gypsy and um, he's still got his uh, caravan in the back of his, his house. He's not far from me. He's a good boy. Yeah. And um, he, he rang me as a bit of business for you. And he, he you know, he's, he's trying to get rid of tons, 50 ton a, a week, I think, of, of copper, 99%. If you know anyone, there's some money that would be on, you know. We can get it at the right price and sell it at the right price. So, you know, things like that. Anything turns up as a deal to be made, money to be made, listen, we do it, you know what I mean? All right, then. Moving as long on. as it's clean, it's, as long as it's legal, not illegal. We don't do illegal stuff. All not right. me. Right, then. Moving anyway, on. going back to this um, traveller, gypsy, I don't know what you're recording, but turned up at my place. Yeah, he, he, he got out. I actually met that guy about um, two months ago in a restaurant. I was having a bit of lunch. He came in, he said to me, you know, Made a big issue about it. You were the guy fighting John Fury and blah, 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 blah. And I said, nah, not me, mate. I just want a bit of peace, you know. 20 minutes later, he's coming back to the bar and he's gone, he's pointing his finger. He goes, you're the man, I know. So I said, look, come on. I, I am. He oh, fucking put his arms around me. Come over here. Give the phone to his missus. He goes, I think John Fury's going to knock you out. 
So we'll fucking just get it on the seat and we'll tell you on the night, I said to him, you know. Anyway, he, he was surprised that he came in the car and apparently he only lives a field or so away from me. And um, he said to me, um, go oh, fucking hell, oh, you're the main man. He just started with his camera and all that. And I said, listen, he's saying John's going to do this, John's going to do this. I said, listen, tell John to fucking get, his, get on the phone to Porky or me or, or come on the channel, let's talk it out and let's get moving on this fight, yeah? Yeah, we'll see. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to fucking knock him out. Yeah, I'm going to shut all you fucking travellers up, all right? That's what I said, and I mean that today. Anyway, oh after that, he's fucking, he's zooming into his, his, his family across the waters, America, Canada. Oh, I've got the mean man here, I've got this and I've got that, and showing him on the phone. You know, giving it, giving it, giving it. Anyway, I sort of knew of him from last time I see him, I met him, and now I even sent him a drink over it in, 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 the, in the restaurant we was in. And he come up to me and said, never fucking do that to a traveling man because they'll take your fucking pants down. <laughs> so he, he taught me something anyway. But I was being polite. That's what I'm like. So on the way out, he went to pay. I said, oh, tapped you on the back. This is on me. No, no, don't be stupid. You've got a business to run. I said, listen, it's on me. See you later. That's the type of guys I am. You know, what we'll, we'll do? Fucking knock him out. It's a bit of bunter. It's good for me. It's good for what we're doing. It's good for John. So John, get your fucking ass out and come forward, mate. Get on Porky's channel. Let's get this fight ahead. Let's talk about it. Freeway. Porky can be the, the questionnaire and we give him the answers. You got your thing to say and I've got my thing to say. Okay, stop hiding, John. You're giving it all the fucking large one. You want to fight this one, that one, all the fucking pros. You're a man. Since it's uh, you, you've been training with your son twice, it's rubbed on you. I'll challenge any man. Well, listen, I'm here. I'm challenging man. I've challenged you already at the beginning. You still are not coming out, mate. So come out. Make yourself known, like you said to me. Let's get on the channel. Let's do some talking. Let's move forward on this, and let's get put it in bed. Yeah? And we'll have a drink and shake hands after. We can do what you want, mate. Right, then. Next. Uh, moving on. Uh, John Fury's not been in touch, as he, regarding the fight. So, but last time, John... Porky Corner at mail.com. What I'm going to do, right, I'll give me an email out, get in touch, and I'll, as Mick's just said, I'll get you both on here and I'll ask the questions because this thing does need put into bed. But there's a couple of other things I do want to ask you, John. One of them is the, the Sun newspaper article where you said that you fought a man for £100,000, a bare knuckle fight. Now, that's a lot of money, John, but you also said you forgot the man's name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to offer a reward, all right? That was a grand here. I'm going to put this grand here, John, right, in this envelope, all right? So anybody who comes forward with footage from the fight and the man's details, I'm going to give them this grand here, and I'll get them on the channel. Now, I personally, I don't think it happened. I don't think it happened. It's a bit, I mean, it's been shut down now, this story. Who did you fight, John? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I forgot his name. But yet you can remember who Jack Johnson fought in his 20th fight 100 years ago. So I don't believe it. Like I just said, once you tell a lie, you tell another. Then you've got to shut it down. It's a bit like giving millions to charity, isn't it? When you get pulled up about it, if it's not true, you shut it down. Because if not, yeah. you'd be writing about it in your books, wouldn't you? So there's a grant there for anybody who can give me the man's name and some footage. <coughs> who fought John Fury in a bare knuckle? All right. I don't think that's that. I'm not talking out of say. I just want to know who it is so I can go interview him and ask him about it. Is there no wrong with that, Mick? No. I'd, love, I'd like to know as well. As I've been told off a very reliable source, 100%, 100%, never happened. So, <laughs> Sorry, can you speak up? I can't hear that. It never happened. A bit louder, my ears a bit... Um... It never happened, mate. Oh, that's a bit better. All right. Never well, happened. I'm not digging you out. I just want you to come on here and tell, tell us about where the fight were, who you had the fight with, who was the fair play referee and uh, where it were at and who were there, who, who were corner men and who were, who, how many people were there? Because all these fights, if you go on YouTube with travelling families having bare knuckles and that, I watched a few other nights. Dan Rooney, uh, 
Joyce's and McGinley's, they're all fighting men, aren't they? Proper tough kids. They're all on, there's footage of all them fighting, isn't they? They're going back to 80s, to Dan Rooney's fight. So, how come this 100 grand bare knuckler? A fast horse is easily trained, always remember that. If you've got a red rum in your stable, you don't need to be much of a jockey to make it get over that line. And that's what I say about that. This bare knuckle fight, I'll tear your limb from limb, tear it up. How come, it, how come we've got no footage in? You can't even remember the man's name. I mean, come on. Am I a lollipop? Do I look like a lollipop, mate? Nah, you're, right what you're, you're right what you're saying. Yeah? Um, it's all bollocks, mate. I'm surprised all them names you just called out, you know, what the, the, the tough boys up there, up north, they're in Manchester as well. You know, Joyce's, I've seen a few of the fights. So I'm surprised they've never had a go in with, with John Fury. He's the big man, you know. Plus, I've heard he's been on fucking, you know, he's putting me down. Listen, in bodybuilding, you take steroids, you, you know, everyone's on it because the, 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 the level we're at yeah. back in the day, in the 90s, uh, that was, you know, we take them, yeah. I, I don't, I don't deny taking them, yeah. Um, but I've heard that fucking John used to take them. Only the other day, he went up to 22, 23 stone and fucking roided up and he's fucking trying to save me about <laughs> getting fucking arms and this and that and blah, blah, blah. You're nothing. You're just a fucking poser, you know? We Maybe were you 20 inch arm men back in the day, mate. He did. No, were well, you one of the 20 inch arm men? Nah, I had 21 and a half. <laughs> That's the truth. I will, you'd have to top that, mate. That's the truth. I've got a picture somewhere. I think it's on my phone um, with a pal of mine, Peter. And he's got fucking arms. And I, I, we measured them up one day and I had 21 and a half. He had 21, I had 21 and a half. <laughs> so you're beating me. They're still not bad today, are they? <laughs> Go on, mate. Uh, moving you can, you can on, see then. me add through my T-shirt. Yeah. You know what, mate? You love yourself, you, don't you? I don't love myself. I just do what I do. And uh, that's me, you know? I, I love me training. I, I, it's, yeah. For me, it's 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 breakfast. It's, it's, it's my temple in the mornings. And I always have done. It's, it's yeah, listen, like I said, if I go abroad, I said to Missy, you make sure that hotel's got a gym. I ain't going. I have to train, you know? It's just this thing up there. I love it. I can't not, I don't know how most people or normal people don't train. And they always make excuses saying, I don't have the time. Two sets. They're saying I don't have the time because they can't do it. I'm just at a factory. Oh, yeah, we can't fight that, Hang on, two sets, mate. No. Okay, mate. No, two, no, they're in. I'll see you when you get here because I'm filming. <sighs> Thinks I've blocked him in, I am. So, er. Uh, yeah, so yeah, basically, would you fight John in a bare knuckler? Uh, if would he, I? If you couldn't get it on in the ring. Well, I'd, I'd do it in a ring properly, with Queensbury rules, yeah. Would you fight him in a BKB, you know, but with hand wraps on, like BKB? Yeah, no problem. Right, so... Listen, as long as it's, it's rest properly and judged properly, I'll fight him anywhere. No problem. Right, right, right. That's good then. John, he'll fight your Queensbury rules with gloves on. Or the bare knuckle BKB eat ring with a ref there and that. I think that's good, mate. I think that's good. May the best man win then, mate. Of course. Listen, he might beat me. I don't know. I'm not shouting my fucking mouth off. Well, you know? You're not having he... doubts, are you, mate? Sorry? You're not having doubts, are you? I'm not having doubts. I know what I'm going to do to him, but listen. Best man win, as you say, you know? Yeah. Well, I know what I'm going to do to him. I'm going to fucking knock him out, mate. Yeah. I'm going to fucking... Sh take the grin and, and shut all them fucking travellers up, you know? Put them to fucking sleep as well. Do not fear me, Gypsy. All I want from you is your tears. In mean, what they're talking about, you know? T telling me about John this and John that and John this. I don't even fucking know John, yeah? yeah. And I said to the, the guy who came in the other day, I said, listen, what is it about you, you this fucking John Fury? You're, li you're all licking his ass, mate. Have you ever seen him fight? I said that. Have you ever seen him fight? Yeah? He's just a fucking man, you know what I mean? He's got a pair of tits on him as well now, hasn't he? Um, you, know? you know, you've seen the video of him fucking trying to pose and fucking, he's up, he's out, he's arms shaking, he's like this and he's doing the back shot and he's, ah, you know, and he's, he's embarrassed what he done because I think his son was taking it and um, be proud of your fucking body, mate, you know what I mean? I mean you can't be proud of your body because it's fucking up to state, but never mind, you know what I mean? Be proud of yourself, mate, Just, you know. It keeps you together, you know, you're a big man.
Have you ever heard that saying, though, mate, that you can't put muscles on chins? Yeah, I've heard that, but people people would say that. People would say that against someone who's got a bit of muscle. Listen, I was an ex-bodybuilder, yeah? I still train. I don't train to be big. I train to keep my physique, yeah? As we're getting older, our body descends in a sense, yeah? Um, so, you know, I keep my I keep myself well, you know? You know, I'm 57. I'll be, I'll be 58 next year. So I put fucking 20-year-olds to fucking shame, some of them, you know what I mean? So I'm proud, you know? It's that old, I can be an old man with fucking big belly hanging out and just about can fucking walk up. You know, you see the people at 35, 40s these days. Because listen, your metabolism, you hit 30s, starts going downhill, yeah? yeah. If you're not a trainer, you're in all this fucking shit from the shops, yeah? You're going to be a, just a normal fucking fat blob walking down the road, yeah? That's all it is. But listen, I can do most things, you know, that in sport-wise, then... Probably a forty-year-old can't do it, they, you know. And I'm coming up to sixty. You can say, you know, in a couple of years I'll be sixty. So I'm proud of of what I do and how I do it and, and, and my physique, you know. Um, All right, yeah. Man. So people, people say to me, you know, wow, fucking hell, you know, take the top of some months and getting changed in the gym. Fucking hell, he said, how old? They all ask me how old, how old I am. Maybe I should put a bit of a bit of a colour on me on me grey, and I'll look younger, right? <laughs> but I'm not into all that. Teeth don't make. No. no, my teeth. No. Are they not false, <laughs> mate? No, they're not false, John. They can't. You can't look them out, mate. No, no, not false teeth, mate. All right. Proper teeth. Right that's another, listen, that's another thing I look after. My teeth. Oh. Morning and, and and evening, I wash my teeth. You know. Good man. <sighs> Right, Don't be lazy, wash your teeth and fucking shower every day. Not like some people. I shower twice a day sometimes, you know what I mean? Oh, good. So Hygiene. Very good. Moving anyway, from, is there... uh, from, from, from you and John, then, this fight that everybody wants to see, uh, let's talk about some proper fighting, then. What did you think about Dylan White coming out, saying that Povetkin's uh, COVID... Uh, Failure test. He's a load of rubbish because he didn't want to fight him. What do you think to that? Um, honestly, yeah, honestly, yeah. I think he's nicked the. I think I think he's nicked the belt, mate, and he wants to fucking just chill out a little bit. Um, I don't think he wants to fight Dylan again because he, he knew he knew he knows Dylan was winning that fight. Yeah. yeah? Um, and honestly, I, I think it's an excuse to get away from fighting him. But listen, who would he fight next? Andy Louise, that'd be a good fight. I don't know, but Dylan wants. Well, what I can't understand is with all this. Parker, yeah. he's meant to be fighting, trying to get get a fight with him, isn't he? Yeah. I think. What, what I can't understand, mate, with Dylan White is he's been bitching about this WBC for three years. Well, why don't he just jump into another governing body then and deal with them? I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? Dylan's been talking about what getting it on with the, w, uh, the WBC. No, no. Uh, Dylan White's ranked with the WBC. He's been number one. Sorry, ranked, so he's been saying for over a thousand days. So you win me now on this, aren't you? Oh right, when are we going to fight Tyson before? Yeah. Yeah. So Dylan's with WBC. He's been complaining about it for over a thousand days. Yeah. And now he's just been beat by a Well, why don't he just go to another governing body? When Joshua were with the WBC, he, he could have had the Wilder fight. He were looking that way. He jumped straight away to IBF. Because he's a bit weak around whiskers, isn't he, Joshua? So oh, why yeah, don't yeah. just do that? Just go with WBO or WBA or IBF. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a point. Why, why has he done that? Yeah. Do you remember when Yui Fury fought Pulak in Bulgaria? Yeah. I do, because I, 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 I work... We're, we're there inside. Now, when Yui fought Pulev, Dylan White was in a purse bid with Pulev. And Eddie Earn had a billion dollars, billion dollar Eddie. And he lost the purse bid to Pulev's team. Just so it shows you how much faith he had in Dillian. He yeah. lost the purse bid. So Dillian had to fight in, in Bulgaria against Pulev. Dillian White pulled out. Yui Fury stepped in. 
and 40 million you're only 24 you just turned 24. point yeah. i want to make is why does he go back to idf go back idf route if he's not getting robert green with wbc because you just can't just park yourself up as number one and waiting for your mandatory because then eventually if you keep taking these fights you're going to get beat and lose that mandatory so yeah why it's only got himself to blame in my opinion yeah what do you think about that mate yeah, I think you're right. Definitely. But obviously, he's sticking where he is at the moment, isn't he? Well, he's going to have to do, isn't he? Um, but let's see who's next for him. Yeah. They're talking about Derek Chisora. They're talking about, I heard, Louise, maybe. Um, I don't know. Louise, who's that? Andy Louise. Oh, the one Louise, that Louise, you mean? Andy. Louise, yeah. Louise, we are. I've heard, room I've heard rumours. You've heard rumours. Let yeah. me tell I'm gonna tell you something now, mate, right? This is really important. The word rumour. Rumour is a pipe blown by surmises, jealousies, and conjectures. Do you know who said that? Mm. Who? Al Capone, nineteen twenty five. People are either surmising, they're just jealous, or they're conjecting rubbish. That's the word rumour. Wow. You like that one? Do you want me to tell you another good one? Go on, then. Fighters, fighters have got to be treated like mushrooms. Feed them shit. Got to be what? Fighters have to be treated like mushrooms. Feed them shit and keep them in the dark. Frank Warren, 1980. Okay. <laughs> you like that one? Old Brick Top. Yeah. Here's another one for you. If you want loyalty, get a dog. Mickey Duck, 1984. That's true. <laughs> Hey? That's true. That's true. Here's another one. Here's another one. Don't worry about it. I've got some at bubbling. Dennis Hobson, 2015. <laughs> I've got some at bubbling. It's the longest bubbling bubble to ever bubble. But moving on then, what do you think about women's boxing at the moment, mate? Yeah, I like it. I like it, yeah? I like it, yeah. I think it's good. It's good entertainment. Listen, if guys can do it, why can't women do it? You know, they, you know. So why not? Marshall's going to be commentating on Five Live uh, for boxing. Oh, is she? Oh, She's she great. Yeah. Pardon? She's amazing. Yeah, so that's good, isn't it? Yeah. That's good. I'm pleased for Savannah. Very pleased. Amazing, amazing woman, uh, what she does uh, and how she does it in the ring. Yeah, she is, yeah. What do you Very think? Surprised. What do you think about Kel Brook's fight this weekend and it not being on Sky and him being in fighting the number one pound for pound guy in the world in somebody's in everybody in most people's list. So is that fight is that fight sorry, I don't even know. Is it is that fight on then this weekend? Yeah, Kel Brook against Crawford for uh welterweight. Well you know he's gonna win, didn't you? Oh, Crawford. Double quits. I'd like to see Kel Brook win. He ain't going to win. Really? Crawford is amazing. Yeah, but I'd like to see Kel Brook win, but I think that everything's caught up with him. What I am disappointed with, though, is Johnny Horsecock Nelson from Sky. <laughs> I'm disappointed with Johnny because he's come mm. out on IFL and he said that Carl Froch's comments about Kel Brook are disrespectful. Now, I've, I've gone back on it and I've looked at the comments that Carl said, and it'll be on TalkSport. I think it's on TalkSport, unless they've knocked yeah. it out. Carl said that he's a cash out for Kel. And I, I agree with that. He's just took what he can. Eddie Hearn went quiet on him after his last fight. He's left him parked up on it. And, I, and maybe well, he's right. Maybe it is a cash out, but it's his opinion. None of them others at Sky are going to come out and say that, Mick, because they're all playing game, aren't they? They're all company men. Listen, Kel, I, 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 I like Kel. He's, he's all right. He's a good kid. But um, imagine if Kel won, how Eddie was feel. Right? Eddie's got no scruples. Look at all them bad things that... Eddie said about Amir Khan and, and, and how his dad ran his career and all that. And next minute, 
he's ended up signing Amir Khan and saying, you know, he's stronger, faster, quicker than the speedy bullet, you know, all that rubbish. Mm. Eddie is mm. a whore and he will whore himself out. The brass neck on boxing promoters is off the charts, mate. I've studied them for years and they can fall out with one person and then the next day they're the best mate again. Mm. There's no loyalty. If you want loyalty, get a dog like we've said, or Mickey Duff said, but if Kel Brook wins, Eddie Hearn will be hanging out at the back of Kel Brook. Definitely. And Kel will be hanging out at the back of him. It's all right yeah. crying now about it. Yeah. He'll be hanging out at the back of, back of him. So it's a two-way street. You know, he knows, Kel knows the score. He's been around it since he was a kid, hasn't he? And his dad's yeah. been around it since years as well. So they're not daft, are they? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's an hard fight for him. I think it's an hard fight. But it, Very it's awesome. a winnable fight. Look. Let's back up a few years. What did they say about Kel Brook fighting at 147? He said it was dangerous and health and safety and he's weak and he, he, he can't do 12 rounds and all that. But yet, he's fighting at 147. Now, mm. five years later, after they were saying it was too much for him. You see where I'm coming from? So, what's been learned from this? Nothing's been learned. So, is it a cash grab? I say yes. Yes, it's all about cash. All Boxing's about, about cash. cash. Yes, it's all about cash. Yeah, definitely. It's like anything, really, you know. But why do why do these youngsters want to become footballers now? Why what? Why do the youngsters want to become footballers or even boxers? It's cash, you get a money. Get a quick. You know. <laughs> what do you think about Tony Bellew's scoring? and rimming of Matchroom. People are saying it's out of control now and that his bias is off the charts. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, he, he's face, it's about favouritism with him, isn't it? His friend, he's my friend, I'll score him. It's like any, any judges, when you're, down, when you're a judge or you know, you're judging something, you're a commentator and judging it, You'd always put your pal ahead, wouldn't you? You know, instead of being honest and and and, and judge it how you see it, or I don't know what what else to say. You know. All right then. What do you think, Mick, about Joyce against Dubois? I personally think that Frank Warren's done really well to treat us to this as a non-pay-per-view. What do you think, Mick? Yeah. Out off to Frank Warren. I think he's done yeah, well. Because that, 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 that would make a pay-per-view, I believe. Well, in this current uh, climate, it would, yeah. But point one of yeah. Eddie Hearn well, it's, saying, a... it's not a pay-per-view, it's just a domestic fight. Well, when Dylan White fought Joshua, that were a domestic, wasn't it? That were pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. Is Dylan White against Joshua any different to Dubois and Joyce? Two Olympians against no. two up and coming. There's yeah. no difference. Nope. No. You can't no, have it both ways, can you? They're all as good as each other. Frank Warren had it as a pay-per-view in March. He's now told that he said it's non-pay-per-view. I don't know why he's done that. He, I don't know why he ain't gone to pay-per-view. I tip my hat to you, Brick Top, for once. I will, I will give you some positive energy on that, Brick Top, but I think it's a good fight. It's a pick and fight. I met Dubois, the slight favourite, but it's a pick up fight. I will be cheering yeah. for Dubois because I like his trainer. I met him. I spent Dubois going to win. He's a nice guy. I'll be cheering for Martin Bowers' fight. Yeah. But he's only a slight favourite. Joe's got a bit more experience. But I just think the fresher kid wins. I don't. Mm. You say more experience. I don't, I don't believe he's got more experience. Um, he just, uh, he's very upright, very straight, and uh, he don't punch what he should be punching. Um, he just, he's an arm puncher instead of putting his body into it, you know. Mate, Joe but, Joyce were boxing when, before Daniel Dubois were born. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. But um, he ain't been taught very well, is he? Um, I, think he, could, he I think he can improve in how he punches or how he jabs, you know. Um, step into it, you know, step into it. Not, he just, like that. You know, 
you step into something, you, you're going to gain more power. Um, but it's what I what I know what, what works basically, um, and it's common sense rather than just you know step into something you put putting force into it, you know, with a flick. Yeah, two seconds, mate. Hello. Let's turn that on. Yeah, uh, all right then, moving on. Uh, do you feel that the fans are getting value for money in the pandemic with these shows that are coming on? You know, Sky subscription, BT Sport subscription. Or do you think that some of the matchmaking has been dangerous? If you might remember the fight the other night, Mumma Moeba got put in with a kid who smashed him to bits. Now, one kid was four and one, the other kid was six and oh, and a KO artist, and he smashed him to bits inside the round. Do you feel that uh, we're going to see a lot more of that with kids being told they've got to step up when they're not ready? And then the kids are going, these kids are going to get hurt, and somebody's going to get hurt. What do you think, Mick? That yeah, you got, you got a good point there, but it's it's very hard on on the up and coming to match people, isn't it? Um, you know, six and zero. Oh, who's he fought to get to gain the six? Number one. Um, yeah, but people in the game know that he's a KO artist, and he actually K KO'd him inside the round, smashed him to bits. Mm. The other kid were out his debt. Is it the manager's fault for putting that kid in there with him, or is it? Is he in a situation where the kid wants to get a few quid, the manager wants to get a few quid, and you've got to keep them active, and you have to take what's offered? Because a lot of people now are taking what's offered. I think that's the case, more the case, because honestly, I think the trainer should have not allowed him to go forward, because knowing what he, he can do and what he can't do. Um, manager is just the manager at the end of the day. He just wants, he's there for the buck, isn't he? Um, yeah. So... If there's, if especially if it's if it's a, a undercard, they're on the undercard of a main event, which is pay per view. They're, gonna, they're just going to stick him in anyway. Yeah. All right. Because it is, it, it all down comes down to money at the end of the day, doesn't it? Yeah, it comes down to money, and but I just think that that Momo Moeba were, I felt it was shocking matchmaking, and I'm not just saying this because. Who his, who his team are. Yeah. I just think that it was bad and it was awful to see. He got smashed to pieces. The, the, the corner team didn't know what they were doing as well. I just think mm. it was in bad taste for me. I don't want to see things like that. But I'm wondering if these sort of fights are going to be happening a lot more down the line where you're going to see kids overmatched. Because there's no small all, is there now? No small all shows to bring kids on. They've just got to be thrown in at deep end on telly shows, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Kamikaze match making. Mm. So, all right, then I think we've covered most topics. John Fury, come see me. There's a chair here for you, John. You can come and sit here. We'll make you a nice cup of tea that you like. We'll just talk about the guy that you fought for 100 bags, the bare knuckle guy. Tail him from limb. Well, not only that regarding John Fury, I mean, on his last, one of his last video, he said, here I am, you know, saying that his, his train is rubbed off on him, off Tyson, and he wants to take on whoever he can, just get hold of me, ring me, I'm there. You know, he kept on put, announcing that. He said, John, stop steering away from me and trying to divert into pros, ex-pros, retired pros that you know ain't going to happen. Come and fight me. Come on a show. Let's talk about it. Let's move forward. Okay, because you're a shitter. That's all you are, mate. Well, what okay? about, Nick? You're going up to Manchester or meeting him halfway and getting at it in a car park. <laughs> Listen, there's no money in the car park. I'm being honest. I'm speaking from here. Yeah? yeah. Okay? There's no money in the car park. Okay? Um, so it's all about raising funds. We're going to get a bit of money out of it as well. No one fights for nothing in this state, and that's the truth. That's coming from my heart, yeah? If you want to fight, we do it properly in a ring. Uh, I've, got all the, I've, got, I've got a ref ready. I've got some judges ready. I've got a, a proper a, a ring guy, ringmaster ready. Um, I'm just uh, penciling a few more bits. Um, come up with a date, John, very soon. I know it's taking longer than what we assume, but we're trying to get it right somewhere at the top. And we will get this on. Um, you little shitter. Will you, put, you are, will you put hey. a contract on my channel 
all typed up by lawyers so we can tell John, here's the contract. Are you going to, can we send them up to where you live and get you to sign them? Is that going to happen, Mickey? When is it going to happen as well? 100% it's going to happen, yeah. I've got a lawyer ready to do that. It's not a problem. What right. we're doing is we're just speaking with certain people to get certain things in place. Once you're there, then you can have everything. On your table, what, what, ready to go. What would, would, if there were any arguments over the split, would you take 40%? Why should I take 40%? Let me take 40%. But would I? Yeah. No, I think, I think it's a, listen, it, listen, it's a 50-50 both ways. Yeah. Um, he doesn't deserve 60, yeah? So it's a 50-50. Yeah, if not 60-40 to me, you know? Um... But no, let's go 50 50. Let's go down in the middle. Let's do everything correct and fair. Yeah. Yeah, we're not professionals, but like professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Because look, no professional fights for nothing these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can, like I said before, we can go around the corner and fucking bump into someone and go bang, have some of that. For what? Where's he going to get us? How much are you going to earn out of it? Nothing. Yeah. So. You know, you get a lot of people saying, ah, oh, you only do it for the money, you only this, you know that. You know what? It's so so much interest is great in this. It's been built up on, on the YouTube over the, over the last six months, you know. Yeah. I think a lot of people want to see it. A lot of people fucking going like that. <sighs> Not going, you know, still going on. Leave it a rest, give it this, do it, all the bullshit, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, Mr. John yeah. Fury. All right, then, well, let's stop talk shitting the it. Stop shitting it and get come out. Come on the show. Come on, Porky's Corner, John. We don't buy. You'll go on all these other YouTube channels. They yeah. don't ask you any real questions. Come it's, on, well, Porky's the, the, Corner, John. I'll ask you yeah. real questions. You and Mick can have a conversation. And I can be in the middle. Like, like gentlemen. Nelson. Like gentlemen. Like gentlemen. Oh, yeah. about, come right. out your shell, John. Come on Porky's channel. Let's talk on live. Give what the fans want to hear and let's move forward. Let's get this chapter out of our lives, mate. And it'd be nice to look back at it so we've done that. Right? Is he going on Boominator's channel? Shout out Colin at Boominator. How are you doing? Well, he, he got pissed. Boominator! Yeah, he got, he, he got pissed. He got pissed off because he didn't invite him. But listen, Boominator, he's invited him. He's done a video. Um, he doesn't even want to go on that because he ain't got the balls to do anything lately. I don't know why. Mm. Oh, well, sorry, he's, tra he's, tra he's going to be training champions as now, isn't he? He's going to become a trainer, something like that. Some sort of trainer. Wow. But, um, listen, it is what it is. He trains, he does what he wants. I don't put no one down into training people because wow. um, everyone's got different ways and it works for some people. So, um, just stop fucking about, John. Stop being a, a coward, yeah, and a wanker, yeah, and a puff. Excuse the puff. I shouldn't have said that. Um, a shit up, shit ass. Come forward, mate. Yeah? Some of that. I'm here, mate. Yeah. How many times are calling you out? Yeah. Hey, pussy. Funky chinky. Yeah? Well, you are, mate. Everyone's laughing at you, John. All the travellers I know around my way, mate, they're all fucking laughing, yeah? What's happening with the fight? What's happening with the fight? I said, he's fucking wanker that he's shitting himself again, doesn't he? What, what's up's happening? So come forward. Stop fucking clucking. I know you got your chickens in the fucking back, mate, but I can hear them in the background all the time. You're trying to lift their weights, you know? So come forward. Turn up. How's it go, Porky? Turn up. Promise me one thing, you'll turn up. That's it. Turn up. Yeah, but you didn't turn up, though, did you, Mick, that morning? But the wolf, the wolf's still here, though. The what? I'm still you here. You ain't blown nothing. Though, did you, mate? You ain't blown fuck all, mate. Yeah. All right. You wouldn't know how to blow someone, mate. Because when you get fucking chin with some of that, mate, on your fucking chin, mate, you're going, mate. You're going to go. And you know what Lenny used to say? Good night and God bless. And that's going to come from me to you, mate. All right. So what I say, yeah. You? you never know. It might be. Training now, John, for you and getting his... He's training now. Look, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. <laughs> All right, well, listen. Thanks for coming on, Mick. You've been a good guest. Has anyone found him yet? That's what I want to know. No, he, he might have uh, slipped out of country. 
slip that across you on, on the bot, on the, uh, the rowing boat. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it on it New Year at some point, mate. Listen, it'd be nice to get it on, you know, stop all the messing about and, you know, all the bollocks, just, just get it on and uh, be Samaritans, and move forward, be Spartans. And obviously there can be a donation made to NHS if you both fight, can't oh, there? There's going to be a big donation to NHS for them lovely people that have done so much for us over the years, you know? Yeah, all right. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, Mick. It's been a pleasure. Vice versa. You have a good week, and I'm going for a massage now in Cunningsborough. Oh, that sounds good, mate. Not a not a, a dodgy one, a, just a, just a, a, sport, <laughs> a sports massage woman. She's all right. Actually. Oh, really? Called Lynn. She's sixty-two. Called Lynn. Yeah, she's going oh, to a massage, that. a sports one. Just from uh, from uh, bottom of me back upwards. No, there's no funny business to that. But, uh, <laughs> Oh, I think you're the one coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a straight massage. I've, I've won a month, so it's a treat to be sent. Sitting up, upright in here all day. So, yeah. all right then, Mick. Well, listen, you have a good weekend and keep in touch. Yeah, all right, mate. Thank you. Bye. 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 Peace. Uh, that was Mickey Theo from Essex. Uh, he still wants to fight John Fury. Uh, for all you people that are sending me emails in as we speak now, uh, if you can send them in, try and keep it to what we spoke about. Try not to make uh, threats regarding me or my children and slicing them up. And stop making stories up that, that John Fury's told you to to do me in and things like that because John's not like that. All right, he's a not he's non-violent. So keep the emails, keep them clean. And it's porkycorner at mail.com. And John, if you're watching, and I know you are, porkycorner at mail.com. That's lowercase in John, no capitals. Email me, and what I'll do. I'll get in touch with you, John, and we'll sort of zoom out between you and Mickey, and I'll be the guy in the middle, be like Johnny Nelson does on Sky when two pay-per-view guys are fighting. We'll call it a face-off. So Essex Mickey against Big John Fuhrer, the travelling man. Big, big travelling fighting man. So, all right. Do I apologise for asking... Who the guy is uh, who John Fury fought for under thousand pound? Because you've forgotten, you John. No, I don't. Thousand quid still here. Thousand quid. This will remain here. So whoever can give me footage of the fight, uh, I don't think that's a lot to ask. Uh, I don't think that's a lot to ask at all. Because there's talkers and smoky bacon walkers, isn't there? So I personally don't believe you had a fight for the grand John, but. It is what it is, isn't it? So, you can tell some newspaper that you tell them. All right? Peace out. Shout out Innovation Alloys. Don't have nightmares, John. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me, porkycorner at mail.com. All right? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. All right? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>